Do you want the premium? The premium premium? The premium premium premium? AMD? Memory experience? I've got it. It's like you might be asking, what is the best memory? Like, nothing is any object except to have the best memory for your third gen Threadripper system. 256 gigs of 3600 memory from G-Skill. This is the real deal. This is the best memory that you can get for that third gen Threadripper. Now wait a minute, 3600, isn't that basically a supported speed? No, you have to keep in mind that the way that Threadripper works is that if you have a fully populated system, meaning you've got eight DIMMs in your Threadripper system, the maximum supported memory speed is only 2666. Really? The everyman sweet spot for third gen Threadripper is 128 gigs of 3200. That is an officially supported speed. And there's a big difference between 3200 and 2667. Well, this memory from G-Skill is your best bet at achieving that 3600 overclock. And to be sure, this is definitely an overclock. You're not gonna be able to achieve 3600 on eight DIMMs with a 256 gig kit on just any motherboard with just any CPU. It's gonna be kind of a significant overclock. Yeah, the timings on this are 18, 22, 22, 42, but at 1.35 volts, you're not having to push the system on chip quite as hard. And we're gonna take a look at some different motherboards. But first up is the ROG Zenith Alpha Extreme. This is sort of the second version of this motherboard. It's designed for the 64 core monster. And that's what I've got in there. The 64 core monster under an EK custom loop. 256 gigs at 3600, but is it stable? This kit is the F4 3600 C18 Q2 256 GTZN. These are pre select, these are like hand picked by the G Skill Oompa Loompas. Look at this. It's glorious. This is how you know you have a premium product when it's packed like this in luxuriant foam. Oh, it's so nice. So here's our burning test 64 cores, like I mentioned. It's in the uh, ostentatious Antec Torque case. It'd be just fine in a workstation build like Greg Core Hartman's. That's, uh, that's who's gonna get this memory when I'm done with it. So he's gonna really enjoy 256 gigabytes of G-Skill memory. If you didn't see the build video that we did for Greg Core Hartman, definitely check that out. Right now, we're running a torture test. I'm building Open Embedded, which is Yocto Linux and all of the stuff that goes with that. Truly a task that takes about 192 gigabytes of memory when we're talking about running on this many threads in parallel. 64 cores, 128 threads. We're really pushing the limits of the workstation as far as we possibly can. And it's stable at 3600. That is not gonna be true of every CPU and especially of every motherboard and every kit of memory. That's why this costs a premium because it's a preset, pre-matched kit of memory. And if anything is going to work, that's gonna be this kit of memory. But you also depend on your CPU and your motherboard to be able to support that because 3600 is not an officially supported speed on the Threadripper platform when we're talking about eight DIMMs. But look at that, it's a glorious G-Skill rainbow of awesome and stable. This this kind of computer is just, this is more compute horsepower than some real businesses are using to run their entire operation of hundreds of employees. That is just completely insane to me. And the fact that this thing is running completely stable, it's just nuts. Oh, and one of our other test programs was building Path of Titans. Yeah, it's a real game, it's on Steam. It's about 40 gigabytes of information, give or take. It takes a while. This Yocto Linux compile with some optimizations and special sauce for me, about an hour, give or take. 256 gigabytes of memory is no joke. When you're able to cross compile for the entire platform in that amount of time, it's crazy. Let's try the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme motherboard and see how it does. The Gigabyte Aorus Extreme with its dual Intel 10 gig NICs, which I love, I love to see on a TRX40 motherboard. Bad news, the 3600 is not stable on this board. I'm not sure what the deal is. Maybe it's gonna vary from board to board. I can get 3533 to work, but an important note for you, if you're gonna do the same configuration first, make sure your BIOS is all the way up to date. Had to use F4D just to get the system to post. Otherwise the postcode was DEAD, like 3640 DEAD, some different postcodes, but it was DEAD and then some other postcode. Uh, the other thing that I ran into was that when I set the XMP profile, it did not change the voltage for the memory, it should be 1.35 volts if you're gonna run a 3600. It also didn't change the SOC voltage. That's something that I noticed on the ASUS board. It was really up in the SOC voltage. The Gigabyte board didn't do that. I did try to manually up the SOC voltage 
and some other parameters and I could get it to post at 3600 but it wasn't stable uh, it wasn't error free an error free operation let's say however 3533 with all eight sticks of memory was flawless overnight burn in testing doing compiles I'm even doing the ADA 64 burn in stress test engineer testing and that was fine so not a bad showing from Gigabyte but very surprising given the problems that I had on the first gen uh, Asus Zenith Extreme. The Zenith Extreme Alpha really is alpha. Bad news for lesser expensive motherboards, we also tried the ASRock Tai Chi and the ASRock Creator TRX40. Both of those motherboards struggle to hit 3600 and be stable. 3200 however on all eight DIMMs was reasonably stable, but that's going to vary from motherboard to motherboard. Remember, 2667 is the maximum supported speed officially. Anything beyond that, it's an overclock, at least when we're talking about eight DIMMs. If you're talking about four DIMMs, 3200 is officially supported and stable. And so that of course should generally work on most boards as long as you have a, a higher end or a reasonably well-matched kit of memory. And it's not necessarily good enough that you order, you know, two or four kits of the same amount of memory. This all comes in one kit, which means that G-Skill has sort of, you know, lovingly handcrafted it to be able to work together. And it's a little bit more likely to work versus just ordering multiple instances of the same kit of memory because it's very, very temperamental potentially to get eight sticks of memory to work at a very high speed. That's why, you know, only eight gig sticks are supported at 2933 and 2666 for uh, all eight sticks in any other configuration, but 3200 is supported when we're talking about four DIMMs. For Gigabyte, in addition to the Aorus Extreme, I've also got the Designare. Now the Designare is sort of a middle of the road board. It comes with a Thunderbolt compatibility. Uh, it's a Thunderbolt interface card. We can't really call it Thunderbolt because Thunderbolt's got to be officially blessed by Intel. It's Thunderbolt compatible, let's say. And that PCB is a little bit different than what we're talking about with the Aorus Extreme. So your mileage may vary on that type of a motherboard. You may have to up the SOC voltage or something like that to get support. The lesser expensive Threadripper motherboards may not be as likely to support 3600 on all eight DIMMs, but there you have it. That's Greg Cora Hartman's computer. I mean, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I did build it. That's the final home of this G-Skill Trident Z 3600 kit. 256 gigabytes for Mr. Cor Hartman himself. Cor Hartman? Cor I don't know, I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong. 256 gigs on the MSI Creator TRX40. Almost plug and play. I did have to update the BIOS. So this is running the 3.5.2020 BIOS. There may be an even more up-to-date BIOS than that. I didn't have to tweak the SOC voltage or anything like that, but it does seem to struggle on boot up every now and then from like a cold boot. So it's probably a memory training issue and something that'll get ironed out in a future BIOS release. I've been through the compile test. I've been through the, the torture test. I've been through the folding at home tests. I'm doing a memory walk test now, but just like a retest but I'm 95% certain that it's okay. Of course, if this video comes out, then yes, it turns out that it was okay. So good job, MSI, 3,600, 256 gigabytes. <sighs> that is incredibly impressive. I'm Wendell, this is level one. Thanks to G-Skill for sending this kit out so I could test it on a half a dozen different motherboards. It was a lot of fun, and it really shows that not every motherboard is engineered the same. The first gen, you know, Zenith Alpha, not the Zenith Alpha, or the Zenith Extreme 2 Alpha, you know, it was a little more problematic in my earlier Threadripper testing, especially with eight DIMMs with this kind of a density. Weird things would happen, like only seven of eight DIMMs would be recognized, but which DIMM was missing would vary. It's really weird stuff. But they got all that fixed. The PCBs revised. I'm told that, that both versions of the motherboard are basically okay at this point, but if in doubt, get the Alpha. The Alpha is definitely... Definitely a top dog motherboard at this point. 64 cores, 128 threads, it's crazy. It's got no LED screen. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and I'll catch you later.